plants are the architects of the animal world. Millions of years before we built the first cities, ants were already building gigantic megastructures. Most ant species build elaborate networks of tunnels and chambers, but some of the greatest engineers have colonized the tree canopy, and they build amazing cities out of leaves. This is the weaver ant. Hi, I'm Danielle, and you're watching Animal Logic. There are two species of weaver ants in the world. Ecophila longinota from Eastern Africa and Ecophila smargadina found everywhere from India to Oceania. They live at the tops of the tree canopy, where it's safe from large animals. Their colonies are huge, often containing over half a million ants. And they're built using tree leaves. They extend over hundreds of square meters and can occupy several trees. All of this is built by tiny worker ants, 8 millimeters long. They're about the size of a grain of rice. When looking for new areas to expand the colony, worker ants test leaves by bending them and aligning them with other nearby leaves. If the leaves have the right flexibility and location, other workers join in to help attach the leaves together. They grab one leaf with their front legs and another with their hind legs, and literally zipper the leaves together. Often, leaves are too far apart for one line of ants to hold together. So weaver ants solve this problem by grabbing each other by the waist, creating ant chains. They're the world's only useful conga lines. When two leaves are touching, it's time to sew them together. To do this, they use an unconventional source of silk their own babies. Larvae from many ant species produce silk to make cocoons for themselves. But weaver ant larvae forego the protection of a cocoon for the security of a safe shelter. Worker ants carry the larvae to the construction site and use them as glue guns. The larvae are held in the worker's mandibles and are softly squeezed while the worker moves back and forth from one leaf to another. They'll continue with several leaves until a ball of leaves, ranging in size from a tennis ball to a volleyball, is created. Surviving in these leaf ball cities in the canopy requires lots of work and constant vigilance. Weaver ants constantly expand their colony. If one ball gets knocked down, there's always a backup. The queen lives at the center of the colony, while elderly workers live in the periphery, catching any prey that wanders in and protecting the colony from any invaders. It's said that while humans send their young men to war, weaver ants send their old ladies. But not every foreigner is unwelcome in a weaver ant colony. Small insects such as mealybugs and scale insects are protected as they secrete a delicious and nutritious substance called honeydew. These insects are sometimes taken to designated pens where they're fed and milked. This is an example of ranching in the animal kingdom. Weaver ants are also adept at chemical warfare. When fighting invaders or killing prey, they secrete formic acid. Their bites are famously painful and they're able to kill large prey like lizards and birds. Weaver ants are so good at defending their territory that some people in Southeast Asia use them as a defense mechanism for their crops. To talk about their use by humans, I've asked my friend Mikey from Ants Canada to tell me about weaver ants in the Philippines and how to take care of your own weaver ant colony. Thank you, Danielle. Hi guys, Mikey aka Ants Canada here, and boy am I excited to share what I've learned about weaver ants, as I feel they're the unicorns of the ant world in my books. Weaver ants are really cool ants because of their unique nesting strategies. They create leaf nests, so you need to provide them ideal plants or trees to nest in. Here in the Philippines where I currently live, they love nesting in mango trees and other fruit trees. Mine are currently nesting in a money tree plant. You can start a colony with a couple of queens, as I've come to discover that they're polygynous, which means a single colony can contain more than one queen. 
They will lay eggs that turn into workers. The workers start expanding the colony little by little. And as it gets bigger, it becomes more efficient and able to support more larvae. If you open a nest, you'll see that there are smaller workers who take care of the larvae. These are about half the size of big workers. They're the nannies of the colony. In other ant species, there are a lot of tiny workers and a few big soldiers. Weavers are the opposite. There's a lot more big workers than small ones. This is because you need the biggest ants to do the construction work. One thing to keep in mind is to feed them the right mix of sugars and proteins for them to stay healthy and productive. For a sugar food source, I find my pet weaver ant colony loves beetle jelly. I find my weaver ants get tired of the same old food after a while. So I provide various flavors of beetle jelly, including coconut, mango, brown sugar, and watermelon on a cycle. This sugar source gives the workers the energy they need to perform their everyday tasks and nest construction. For a protein source, I feed pre-killed mealworms and crickets. They carry the prey back to their leaf nests to consume in private. The protein is essential for the queen's egg-laying demands and the growth of the larvae. Of course, water is also necessary for the ants to drink and the plants they live on to remain healthy and growing. I've got my weaver ant set up on an automatic ring system. If you're curious about these and other ant colonies, we've got a ton of videos on various ants that live in my ant room. So feel free to visit my channel Ants Canada and discover how ants are some of the coolest creatures on the planet. It's ant love forever. And now it's back to you, Danielle. Thanks, Mikey. Weaver ants are so common in Southeast Asia that they're not only used for crop protection, but also as a source of food. They're full of protein and their formic acid gives them a tangy flavor. Anyone down for a weaver ant tapenade? So what animals should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching.